to that dad guy. It's May 19th, 2023, here in the little city of Moncton, where we got some stuff going on. You know, we've got a visitor this time around. Princess Anne is in Moncton for the weekend. She is here because it is the 175th anniversary of the 8th um, Hazars, which is the oldest military um, regiment in Canada. And she just happens to be in charge of it. And she is celebrating 50 years as commander of that regiment. So she was here 25 years ago for the 150th. Now she's back for the 175th. So she's got a busy plan ahead of her. Um, you want to tell them? You know, okay, she doesn't want to be on camera anyways right now. Um, so, yeah, so this morning she was, um, you, yeah, at, at 11 o'clock this morning she laid a wreath at the um, statue of our uh, three mounted police that we have downtown uh, that were uh, fatally uh, shot a few years ago. Uh, so she's a uh, later wreath there. Uh, she has gone to a service. She went to Sistema, which was uh, something my son was part of. He uh, played the trumpet, uh, trumpet in Sistema. It's an organization of uh, children's musicians. Uh, he did that in middle school. Uh, so she's stopping by there uh, this afternoon. And you got to go? Okay, she, I guess you got to go now. So she's not going to be on camera right now. Uh, but... Yeah, thanks for stopping in and having a cup of tea. I appreciate you uh, coming by, and uh, welcome to Moncton. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not going to get up. She knows where the door is, so she's gonna, just going to go. Um, she's got things to do. She's also going to a concert this evening for the uh, uh, youth orchestra is putting on for her. So if the, you're at the Wesleyan Church tonight, you can go check that out, and maybe you'll run into Princess Anne there. Uh, tomorrow, there's going to be a little bit of a procession downtown. There's going to be a 21-gun salute to her at 11 o'clock. And uh, then on Sunday, she's going on to Sussex, a little community just down the road, where she's going to be uh, doing some things there as well. So she's got a weekend in Moncton. What more can uh, the uh, sister of the king want than to hang out here on Victoria Day weekend? All right, what else do we have going on? Well, my brother, he's flying in Friday or Sunday night, and uh, we're going to have a family gathering here on Monday, so that'll be kind of fun to have a little bit of a barbecue, and my sister and family are coming up from St. John, so uh, most of us will be here. Uh, that'll be nice to reconnect and uh, spend some time together as a family. But until then, we've got a bunch of postcards to go through. We've got some official ones from Post Crossing. And if you don't know what Post Crossing is, you just go to postcrossing.com. It is a great hobby. And uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. This first card, let's get right to it, is this card here, these two hedgehogs. Uh, this is a pretty special card. You know why it's a special card? Well, it comes from Tanya. And Tanya's in Germany. Uh, she's 40 years old. And... Uh, she comes from the town where the bicycle was invented in 1817. In her spare time, she likes to go camping and uh, read crime novels. And uh, there's a stamp. There's the owl. And do you know why this is special? This date here. The 5th of October, 2022. That is when this card was sent. It took 229 days to get here. Um... Yeah, but it arrived. It's in good condition. There's nothing on it that says that says that it went anywhere special. Uh, I'm guessing someone just walked it here instead of taking the seven or eight days it normally does to get from Germany. But I'm glad I was able to register it and uh, send her a note back to say that I finally received the card. Sometimes that happens. That's why we say that this is a hobby of patience. Uh, snail mail is snail mail for a reason. Sometimes it gets there in a decent amount of time, and sometimes it takes a sweet old time to get there. All right, this next card comes from the United States. You can tell based on all the things on the card. Uh, and this comes from uh, Natalia, and she just ran her first half marathon, so congratulations to her. Uh, she is uh, big into running. She's hoping to do another one next month, so that's probably very soon for when she sent this. She sent it on April 28th, 2023. So it's possible her next half marathon is coming up. So good luck to you on that if you happen to be watching. Um, she says, do you like to run? I only like to run if someone's chasing me. Otherwise, uh, normally I don't uh, hit that speed. I have been doing a lot of walking, maybe even a little bit of quicker walking, but not a lot of running. Anyways, moving on. So thanks, Natalia. 
the next card comes from la, 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 the U.S. as well. This one comes from California. This is the uh, uh, Ceratos Library. Incorporates a variety of architectural styles from Art Deco and Arts and Crafts to Contemporary. And this comes from Joey. Uh, Joey loves sports. He, he enjoys schools. His favorite subject is English because he wants to improve his English because last year he moved to the United States from the Philippines. So welcome to the United States. Well, I'm in Canada, but welcome to North America. Uh, so hopefully, Joey, you enjoy your time now in the United States and in beautiful California. Thank you for the card. Uh, this next card, which goes in this direction, comes from uh, Germany. And this comes from Suzanne. Suzanne says that her son and grandson, Justice, love Lego as well as I do. They visited a few Lego exhibitions and... Uh, they're thinking the Titanic might be the next dream build. And that would be a dream build for me too. I certainly can't afford the Titanic, so it'll have to remain in my dreams. Um, but it's such a great set. And so there is the post-crossing stamp that we have. And this has all the facts about the Maypole, May 1st, and all the different traditions in here. I'm going to read a few of them because I think they're quite interesting. I have heard of the Maypole before, but I never heard of the, the great details that are in it. So let's read through a bit. It says, in some areas, each village has a Maypole, a very tall fir tree trunk, in the center of the village during May. It is uniquely decorated with ribbons, wreaths, and signs showing local craftsmen's guilds and usually has a tree on the top. On the eve of May 1st, it is risen by the men folk of the village using long sticks and ropes. The process usually supported by shouting and a brass band, and of course food and beer, especially maybach, are essential. Um, doesn't really explain what maybach is, but so if you know, let me know. Uh, there's a tradition of trying to steal the maybomb, which is the maypole, uh, before risen from the neighbor's village, it may even be given back for a beer in return. On the eve of May 1st, many people join a dance into the May to celebrate spring. In some areas, young guys decorate a birch with colorful paper ribbons and secretly put it up in front of the house of their loved one. Exciting for the girls if they get a May bomb and from whom it might have been. So there we go. Thank you, Suzanne, for that interesting tidbit on the Maypole. All right, this next card comes from Spain by, well, it comes from Germany via Spain. And how, what I mean by that is Oliver, who was the person that sent this, he and his wife were, uh, are from uh, Germany, but at the moment they're on in the Canary Islands and uh, of Tenerife. Before that, they were uh, traveling. Whenever they're on the road, he sends postcards from the holiday destination. Well, that's kind of cool that they get a chance to send that. So this is... Uh, Canary Islands, you can see it's got a Spanish stamp on it where it was sent from. So while he's away, he sends post-crossing um, cards around. So he gets to get uh, have a chance of sending from all sorts of different countries. He gets the uh, Spanish code there as well. So I think that's a great idea. Not that I am doing those much that much traveling, but if I did, I'd try it. So thanks, Oliver. This next one is not official anymore. We've moved into the direct swaps or surprises. Uh, this card is Lyon in France, and this comes from Billy, who uh, isn't from France, but uh, had been traveling over there and had a chance to uh, send me a card while she was away. So it's a UNESCO heritage site. Beautiful, beautiful. Love the architecture. So thank you for that. Oh, lest I forget, there's the stamp with the barcode. You can see more and more countries are starting to get into the barcode. We've talked about that in the past. All right, this next card comes from Carl in Austria. It is a Thousand Shen card. He's been great at sending these cards to me. Love how they sparkle and all the detail that are in them. And there are the stamps on the back. I have a nice mailman stamp, so I appreciate that. So thank you, Carl. This next card comes from Kathy. At first, I got this card, I saw it, and I zoomed right in, and I saw right up front, Boston. I was like, well, you sent me a Boston Red Sox card? No, that's not what it is. Look closely, everybody, and myself included. 
Uh, they are all wearing different uniforms. This is an all-star game. This is in July 24th, 1911 in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, this is a uh, view of the American League All-Stars in the Addie Joss Benefit game. The benefit organized by the Cleveland Naps, which is what they were called at the time, uh, to raise $13,000 for Josh's widow. Now, I didn't know who Addie Josh was. So having that up there, I've done some research and you'll get a chance to see, hear the research too. There's the stamp. Uh, if you know who Addie Joss is, then you probably know some of this details, but I'll read it to you anyways. Adrian Addie Josh was born in 1880 and he died in 1911 when this All-Star game was taking place. Um, his nickname was the Human Hairpin. He was a professional pitcher. He pitched for the Cleveland Bronchos, uh, which were later known as the Naps. He pitched from 1902 to 1910, which spanned about nine years because in 1910 he was quite sick and uh, didn't pitch very much of it. Uh, he fit, uh, his claim to fame was he pitched the fourth perfect game in history, the second of the modern days. His ERA was, what ERA stands for earned run average, for those of you who aren't baseball fanatics. Um, his ERA was 1.89, second lowest in Major League Baseball history of all time. His whip, which is walks plus hits per inning pitched, was 0.968, lowest all time. Uh, he was a wins leader in 1907. He was a two-time ERA leader in 1904, 1908. He pitched his perfect game in the uh, Divisional Series in 1908, which was the closest he got to a World Series. Uh, he's pitched two no-hitters on top of that. Uh, he's in the Cleveland Guardians Hall of Fame. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1978 because the Board of Directors waived the mandatory 10-year minimum. He, because he only pitched nine years, um, they said his accomplishments during those nine years uh, made him a Hall of Famer. Uh, during that time, he pitched in 257 games. He had 160 wins, 97 losses. Of the 257 games he pitched, 234 of them were complete games. He had 45 shutouts, 920 strikeouts, four consecutive 20-win seasons. And because the, the baseball players weren't paid the way baseball players are today, when he wasn't pitching... Uh, from 1906 to 1911, when he died, he worked as a newspaper sports for, for sports writer. Um, yeah. He died in 1911. Uh, um, sorry, he died in 1910 um, from tuberculosis and meningitis. So he did a lot, won a lot of things, um, was a fantastic pitcher for a very short period of time and uh, deserves to be a Hall of Famer. And thank you, Kathy, for introducing him to me and hopefully me to some other people. You know, I do some biographies from time to time, uh, mostly on Canadians or ha have been all Canadians so far. Uh, this is an American, but uh, his story deserves to be told too. All right, moving on. This next one comes from Keeks out in uh, Washington. She was uh, visiting Oregon along her vacation time so she sent me this card while she was away and there are the stamps it's so nice to come on people's travels uh, friends when they're away um, just uh, either picking up a card and sending it from where they were or picking up a card and sending it when they get back I really appreciate that um, I really like this uh, this World Forestry Congress stamp she uses a lot of older stamps and I do appreciate that a lot as a stamp collector so thank you Keeks all right, this next card was from someone I hadn't heard from in a while. This comes from Steffi. Uh, she's in Germany, and I was glad to get a card from her again. Uh, she said a lot's been happening, so, but uh, she's glad to be back after taking a break from post crossing. And sometimes we need that. We just need to take a break from it and uh, rebalance. There's the stamp. She wasn't done. She sent this one as well, this thank you card. And uh, the reason she said she sent me a thank you card is that uh, she watches her uh, watches my videos and uh, it inspires her sometimes so when she's down she gets a little pick me up from watching my videos so that means a lot to me that um, watching my videos can have that effect on you so I appreciate that I really like it when people reach out and let me know that uh, either they're watching or um, yeah What's going on in their life so thank you steffi i look forward to 
continuing our swaps. All right, this next card comes from um, Andre and Merritt, and they're in Estonia, but when they sent this one, they were in Macau in China. They do a lot of traveling, and I'm very fortunate that uh, when they travel, they send me cards. Doesn't say a lot on the back, but that's all right. Them just sending the postcard says so much to me. And there's some nice stamps as well. This next one is a meetup card, and it comes from Skyestia in Lithuania. And it was nice to get a card from her. She says that there was 34 members that attended this meetup. There are all the stamps, postage stamps, and stamps of all the attendees. Now, I've sent a letter to Skyestia. Uh, she's getting married, so happy early congratulations to her. Um, uh, so she'd asked for a... Um, wedding postcards or things that had to do with weddings. So I created an envelope and put some stuff in there to send off to her. That was in February. She still hasn't received it yet. So I am hoping it is gonna get there before September uh, so she can have her requested things. Um, yeah, I'm baffled on why it's taking so long, but as we stated early on in the video, sometimes it's patience and things take a long time to get there. Um, so it's got the summer to make it there, but hopefully it will. All right, this next card is a creation. Uh, this comes from David in San Francisco in the United States. Uh, he says he uh, picked up this little kit at a local Target uh, just for a little bit of fun. So yeah, it's a nice little kit. Good build in there. There are the stamps. And a nice idea to create your own postcard. I like that. I like it a lot. All right, this envelope comes from the United States. It comes from Sam. Sam sent uh, a couple things in here. I'm going to make sure I get the right one. She sent one, a card that has the answer to the question that I uh, posed for the month of May. Uh, so I've got a, a response to that. She also sent a little surprise thing that we're gonna do on another time. Um, there's her lovely wax seal on the back. I love that. Uh, one day I may do with that dad guy wax seal i talked about it but it's just not in the cards just yet but soon hopefully it will be um, but she did send me this card so we have a whole bunch of the different people that played superman either in television or movies there's a lot more of them out there but there's a few asks are you a superman fan apparently metropolis isn't too far from where she lives hmm? it's possible uh please enjoy this random collection of stamps oops stamps yeah well that's what we're going to show you in the future so i appreciate that uh she says everything's green and flowers are blooming where she is uh she's even planted seeds for her veggie garden already so she's well ahead of the game there i'm still waiting i've got tulips up on the side that have bloomed but the ones in my front bed haven't yet bloomed i'm not sure why they're taking so long but hopefully they will soon um it's nice to see some of the things the trees are, and bushes are all starting to get their leaves on them again there's the stamp on the back, which was nice that she put a stamp on there. Uh, now it had been previously canceled, so she's just to fix the stamp. So I appreciate that. Uh, but we will put that in here and I will get to show you the, uh, the stamps on another video and uh, the answer card for the May question. That will get done the first Saturday in June. So I'll put that aside as well. And if you don't know what the question is, tune in to Saturday go, or go back into the last Saturday and, and have a listen. But tomorrow for sure, I will uh, answer your questions. So if you have more questions, put your questions on last week's video, uh, the Saturday one, uh, episode 66 or order 66 as I put on it last time. Uh, tomorrow I will answer those questions and you can uh, ask me some new ones. And you can also find out what the May question is, so you can uh, send your response in. All right, this next envelope comes from Media in Finland. We have the new P stamp. You can see the uh, cancellation marks that are on there too, that correspond with it. Inside, we have this Nobel Prize winner. This, she said this is from the, uh, this is Alfred Nobel, who was born in 1833 and died in 1896. He's the inventor of the dynamite and the founder of the Nobel Prize. 
So she got this card when she was in Stockholm. She didn't visit the Noble uh, Museum this time around, but she has been there before. Uh, but she did buy some dynamite candy and tried that. The cherry trees were in blossom in Stockholm and looked very beautiful, very lovely. And then this card as well. She got this card when she was in Turku and uh, she visited a few museums while she was there. So thank you, Media, for more cards and for the beautiful peace stamp. We hope that there is peace around the world, especially in Ukraine. All right, this next card is a Lego card. And this comes from Brenda. And I didn't know who Brenda was at first. She says, hello from the capital city, city of Canada, which the capital of Canada is Ottawa. She stumbled across my YouTube channel and loves my enthusiasm for postcards. And uh, she's even started collecting Lego during the pandemic and is obsessed. But uh, post crossing is still her first love. So there is the stamp of the king. Someone's pen canceled it. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad, Brenda, you found me. And uh, we can do a swap. You can give me your address so I can at least respond to you. And uh, yeah, I'd be curious to know what kind of Lego sets you've uh, built during the pandemic. And I'm glad you are watching this channel and uh, seeing all sorts of uh, different stuff that I put out. So I appreciate the support. And speaking of that, we have another Lego card that showed up. And this says, I've been a post crosser for a year now, and I've been following you on YouTube and Instagram for a while. This week I visited a small Lego store where they also sold Lego postcards. Of course, I have to send you one. So there, this is from Leon 10. And uh, I don't have her address to respond to her, but uh, I was able to find her on Instagram and reach out and thank her for this. Uh, but uh, she can send me a message if she would like me to send her a return card. I would be happy to do so. So that is all the mail that showed up this week. Uh, wonderful, wonderful um, news coming through with uh, people that have found me on YouTube have been watching and have decided to reach out. I really love that when people reach out and tell me that I'm not just talking to myself on this camera, that there are people out there listening. Uh, I thank you for that. Um, I thank uh, Kathy for introducing me to Addy Joss and uh, the history that I got there of the Cleveland Nats um, Hall of Famer uh, picture, I didn't know about him, so I'm glad that I've been able to do some research and find out about him. And uh, all the other interesting stories, you know, where the bicycle was first invented showed up this week. Uh, if you can't learn from post-crossing, you're doing it wrong because there are some wonderful people out there and some wonderful places. And if you just take the time to, uh, to write a nice message about your location, um, you can spread the word of what your area has going for it. And if you think, well, my area really doesn't have much going for it, I doubt that to be true. I think uh, wherever you are, there's some sort of history to be told. And uh, even here in Moncton, where we have uh, Princess Anne visiting us, you would think, why in the world would Princess Anne be coming to Moncton? Well, we've had royals come here quite often, actually. And... Uh, it's nice to know that we've got some history in a place on the planet that's worth checking out. And I know you probably do too. So have a magical week. Like Polo? You say like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy?